anything around here sucks, it's the whole town of Madisonville. I mean, look at this one over here. She ain't even got all her teeth.
live event this week. It ended up being shattered. And it's also no longer on the head of Crutch, who we haven't seen since he was summarily disposed of a few weeks ago. That's right, interfering in that Ultimate X match. He is the reason that Andrew Hunter is not the national champion right now. I think we all owe him a thank you. I expect something is up if the general manager is up here sitting with us on commentary watching things. This is a big night. Big time to come here for the first time in Madisonville. I just came up here to get a better look at things. Uh -huh. You've set some match up. You've signed the match into somebody's oblivion. I've set up several matches. I'm the general manager. I set this match up. I'm going to figure out what your plot is. Well, what, are, what is Andrew Hunter plotting over here with Crutch's hat? I think Logan Abel just wants to get this match underway. Logan Abel in Avispo, last time we saw him being up in the balcony at our Evansville show, just watching that tag team gauntlet match from afar. You gotta wonder what's on their mind, what they're up to. You, know, you gotta wonder why they, why they didn't sign up for that. That was an open invitation to WWA stars past and present. Must have some up their sleeve, I guess. Also, we've been noticing Avispo's acting really strange since he lost that mask. Well, he lost a part of himself, that's for sure. Maybe we can use that hat and put it over Avispo's head and save us all a lot of pain. There's Madisonville crowd rallying behind Logan Abel. I'll tell you one thing, my grievances with Abel and Avispo aside, this is an incredible matchup. Two men that are both the most proficient in the martial arts. One with striking and kicks, the other with holds and submissions. This could be an amazing match. If we want to go way back, these two know each other so well because they came into the WWA together as a part of Defiance. Saw the other two members of Defiance last week in that tag team gauntlet match. So these two know each other pretty well. Yeah, you know, at one time they were likely sparring partners. I would expect to see a lot of reversals. Although they've both grown so much since they first entered the WWA. Yeah, they've grown to hate each other. Logan Abel's looking to dislocate that hip of Andrew Hunter's with those kicks. These two hands, oh, their hands come apart now, but... Oh, it seemed just technical hold after technical hold, and Andrew Hunter's had enough of it throwing a kick right to Logan Abel's back. Snapmare follows up with a kick to the back of the head. Turnabout's fair play, I guess. Oh, come on. Very early in the match, Andrew Hunter didn't have to do that. He used that eye rake for, to try to gain an upper hand. What he has to do and what he does may be two wow. different things, but it's effective all the same. So is that kick from Logan Abel. Surprised Andrew Hunter isn't knocked out right now. One, two. Uh, didn't get, quite catch him on the temple. Caught him just a little bit lower. Catching a lot of that body, still hurt like hell. Not giving Andrew Hunter any time to breathe. That's what you got to do against Andrew Hunter, though. You cannot let him have any room to work. You know, and another, another line with all the experience these two have picked up across the years. Logan Abel and Andrew Hunter could make a formidable tag team. Maybe one of the greatest tag teams to ever grace through these curtains. 
Oh, wait, it looks like he might already be calling for the double stomp. He could put it away right here. Oh, but here comes Jones. Oh, come on. Jones up on the apron. Jones isn't doing anything. Well, Jones he, didn't do a thing. He's become a distraction, if nothing else, and it worked. It bought Andrew Hunter enough time to get back to his feet and mount some offense. Just like that, the collective is so good at working at a unit, even in matches that they aren't technically in. Yeah, Andrew Hunter and Jones, not having spent really any time as a tag team, but working together than two people who have been a tag team for a long time now. The Vispo just sitting, biding his time on the side. I think Vispo knows that Logan Abel doesn't want him to interfere and gain an upper hand here. He wants to win this match in an honorable way. Honorable. Who cares about honor? It's about winning. Oh, come on. Andrew's just taunting Logan now, taunting this crowd as well. He might want to watch out because you spend any time taunting Logan Abel, it gives him a window to get in there. Oh, and down goes Abel in the corner. That's going to be it right here. The near fall. Two. The match will continue. Logan Abel hit the back of his head pretty hard off of that drop kick. Took that middle turnbuckle right to the back of the head, and now Andrew's just trying to disorient him. This is... Oh, wow. Wow. What a bridge. A submission specialist, Andrew Hunter, with a You know, there's not too many people that might be able to outclass Logan Abel when it comes to submission moves, but if anyone has a shot in that locker room, it's Andrew Hunter. All I'd say Andrew Hunter is the superior submission artist with Logan Abel being number two. It's such a close race when it comes between these two. Well, we can definitely agree there. Oh, got his knee up. There's that opening Logan Abel needs. Oh, he's got him. He's got to go for the pin here if he wants to win this match. That seems like that took a lot out of him, though. He's still very disoriented from some of the holds have been put in by Andrew Hunter. Both of these men down right now. Referee JT administering the 10 count. The tilt to world slam was an act of desperation. Survival. Both men stirring, trying to get to their feet. Both these men trading right hands. And there's a kick from Logan Abel. Seems like he's got a bit of an upper hand. There he goes. The adrenaline kicking in for Logan Abel. Oh! oh. He caught that, the tipple on that one. That could be what he needs. He's out. Pin him if you're going to do it. I think Logan Abel realizes that there might be just that much more he needs to do. Up again. Logan Abel had him well scouted. Disabler. Logan Abel's feeling it. He's getting him in position. Well, we often see him follow that disabler up with the double stomp. Could be seeing it right oh, here. Look at this. Jones pulling Andrew Hunter to safety. Good to job. the outside. Excellent job by Jones. I think Avispo's had enough of it. We're going to see Avispo face off one on one against Jones later. Avispo with a crazed look in his eye. 
I would not want to deal with him right now. Raining blood oh. in the ring. Two. Logan Abel gets the shoulder up. Andrew Hunter definitely got some reward out of that distraction that was going on outside the ring. What you gotta do here? Good thing Logan Abel got out of the way of that. <laughs> Those slaps right across the back. That's even worse. He's going up again. Great open to this area. And we've got more action to come as we emanate from Madisonville tonight on WWA Hysteria. Did you know you're seeing less than half of the exciting WWA action by just watching online? Try to catch the World Wrestling Alliance when they come near you. Show dates, locations, and ticket prices can all be found at facebook.com slash WWA is now. This Friday in Owensboro, Kentucky, the most exciting event that the WWA has to offer. I'm talking about Kentucky's biggest battle royal. I'm talking about the war. Now the war is all about going the distance. And with me being the WWA champion enter in at number one, you better believe that I'm more than willing to go that distance. Because any man that steps in that ring with me is gonna do one thing, one thing alone, and that is lose. I will throw everybody over the ropes, no matter how many are there. And at the end of the night, a lot of asses will get Burnt. The action continues from Madisonville as the tag team champions have arrived. The perfect pair. I tell you what, I'm really looking forward to this match. We got a special debut for all of you Hysteria viewers. The Murphy Boys are facing the perfect pair tonight for the tag team titles in their debut. They've been making a name for themselves all around this region, and I thought, man, it would be great to have them here in the WWE. Perfect pair have repeatedly told me they'll take on all comers, so figured it's time to back up what they speak. They'll have no problem doing it. The perfect pair is perfect. Perfect pair, of course, the new WWA Tag Team Champions as of the last hysteria, winning that Tag Team Gauntlet match with a little assist from Lucas Tyler. Little assist. They want it fair and square, and that's why they have the belts. That's not how it always works out. They have the belts? They do. You taking the belts away from them? I'm not. All right. You also see those two plaques they're carrying around. That is for the 2017 WWA Tag Team of the Year. Well, I for one am looking forward to this debut of these two young men, the Murphy Boys. Two brothers, you gotta think that works well as a tag team. Knowing each other like the back of their own hands. Some of the, you're assuming they know the back of their own hands that well. Some of the most well-decorated tag teams of all time were brothers. Maybe this could be the start of a beautiful thing for the Murphy Boys as they 
challenged for the WWA Championship in their debut. I'm always for looking for more WWA superstars. Of course, Carson Murphy in the black trunks, Cameron Murphy in the orange trunks, getting a pretty, pretty good ovation in this area for their Madison debut. Madison will the following contest at Madtown Madness is scheduled for one fall and it is for the WWA Tag Team Championship. Introducing first the challengers making their take any opportunity to run their mouth. We already have two ringside announcers tonight. I, I guess we have a third and a fourth. Well, nothing's good enough for the perfect pair, is it? I think it's a nice treat. Get away from the, uh, the interesting voices of Josh and the notorious T.O.B. I don't know, Vanderpool's voice to me is like nails on a chalkboard, man. So the debut of Carson and Cameron, the CNC Murphy factory. Oh, would you stop it, Lyle? It's the Murphy boys, get it right. I said, well, that was pretty creative. You can throw it out your blowhole, but still, we'll see what these boys have to do. I have no doubt they will be impressive in this debut match. Well, the real test of an athlete is how they're going to deal with defeat here at the end of this match. Will they deal with defeat gracefully, or will they throw a fit? I wouldn't be so sure that it's a 100% guarantee that they'll lose this match. Can you imagine winning the tag team titles in your debut? That would be unprecedented. Yeah, well, I think either way, they're gonna have a target on their back, win or lose, because some of the tag teams that have been here for a long time are not gonna be too thrilled that they got a title shot in their debut. So either way, I think they're gonna get some competition out of this one. No wow. doubt. That's the kind of jab at our general manager that I would have made, but that's a good point. I make matches I would like to see because I'm the biggest fan there is. So you don't care about our other tag teams. You want to see his new tag team get a shot ahead of our others. That has That's nothing to do really with it, That's a really good Lyle. point, Joe. That is not what I was saying I at all. I see what you're getting at. See, here's the thing. The perfect pair outlasted so many other tag teams in that gauntlet match on the last hysteria. They beat just about everyone on the roster, barring Logan Abel and Avispo. So everybody else sucks. You had to go outside the WWA to find some real competition. Oh, no, I they, get it. They all collectively had to go to the back of the line, which starts behind the Murphy boys. There you go. They had their shot, Lyle. Uh-huh. Cameron... No, I'm in favor of it. I, I agree. Cameron Murphy seeming to be somewhat evenly matched with Prince Vanderpool here. These two trying to gain a head. One, two. Wow. 
Another pinning predicament, not enough to put him away, but he is not letting up on Vanderpool, which is good. Cameron Murphy, definitely the speedier of those two. Speedier. I feel sorry for anybody of these two boys trying today. You see how fast they're trying to finish? You gotta have some timing, some pacing. There's no point in stretching things out any longer than you have to. Get the job done. You've got the same kind of mentality that somebody like Alexander Knight would exhibit. Just trying to make an example or, or trying to hurt somebody or, or make a point before they make a pinfall. And Absolutely. That's, just, that's not how you win a match. Really? Who has the titles? Did you see how this crowd lit up whenever Carson tagged in? They got the crowd in the palm of their hand. Alexander Knight, of course, the most experienced athlete in that ring right now. I think he's underestimating the Murphy boys, though. He certainly has. One, two, that could have been it right there. The Murphy boys have been at this for less than a year. Wow. And they're already, I mean, you can see for yourself how good they are in the ring, but they're making a name for themselves around Kentucky and other organizations. I will say they remind me of another young up-and-coming team that started a few years ago in the WWA that have gone on to make huge waves around the world, and that's the Brotherhood. That's true. Similar techniques and speed. And there's another tag. So good at strategizing. You saw Carson tag in there behind Cameron's back. These two know where the other person is at all times. We know for, for a couple of guys that are as new at this as they are, they've done a great job of cutting the ring in half, keeping their opponent on their side. Wow. Can outmaneuver Alexander Knight. That's hard to do. This could be it. One, two. That face buster off the top wasn't enough to put away the Cavalier Profiteer, but I sure enjoyed seeing it. It's not enough to put him away, but look how slow he is to get to his feet as well. Definitely took something out of him if it didn't get him the pinfall. Yeah, but you're seeing the lackadaisical manner. Blind tag there. I don't think Cameron knows that no, Vanderpool's the legal man. And this is the point that I was about to make. Cameron and Carson doesn't have the respect that they need for the current WWE Tag Team Champions. They're not taking them seriously enough and they're making big mistakes because of it. You think the perfect pair respects the Murphy boys? I mean, look, Vanderpool's getting a hold of those eyes. We're talking about two Cameron. different types of respect. The perfect pair absolutely respect the threat that the Murphy boys possess. They respect the belt. They treat it seriously. The disrespect that you're talking about is the type that gets you a win. Another blind tag from the perfect pair. They're just putting the boots to Cameron Murphy now. Well, the Murphys have had a pretty good showing so far, but I'm not so sure that they were prepared for the level of underhanded tactics that they were going to face from our champions tonight. Underhanded tactics? What underhanded tactics? Like that right there, Lyle. Look Jump at it. Are you lying? Well, that was just coincidence. Referee's not seeing any of it. Carson trying to alert the official to what was going on, but as Joe would say, that's as legal as a wrist lock. I don't think Alexander Knight was expecting Cameron to have that much energy left to him to knock him down out of that corner. Both men slow to recover. Well, they're going to the wrong corners. Tag made. Well, the referee didn't tag. see it. Here we go. Oh, some nice tandem work from the Murphy boys. 
A little bit of style, but I don't think the referee saw that tag. He didn't see the tag. tag. He's not going to allow it. There was a blind tag made, but the official did not see it. He's not going to allow it. Oh! oh. That drop toe hold puts Cameron in the enemy turnbuckle. Oh! oh. And now Vanderpool that using some underhanded tactics, using that black. The wrong man for the Murphy boys is still in the ring. A lot of confusion here. Oh! Or maybe I'm confused. We'll have to go back and look at that. Cameron might be out of it after that plaque shot. Hitting him upside the head with that Tag Team of the Year award. The only thing that matters is that it's the right man for the perfect pair. Carson's dying to get in this match. He thought he had a completely legal tag to get in the ring, but referee did not see it. Yeah, this has been a, a, an unfortunate development for the Murphy boys. Now the Cavalier Profiteer, close fists in succession. They're targeting that head. I don't know if Cameron knows where he's at right now. It almost seems like they might be going for a knockout. I wouldn't know where we were at if it wasn't written down on a piece of paper in front of us. Double team maneuver, that could be enough to put him away. Vanderpool with a lateral press, hooks the leg, one, two, two count, the Murphys are still in it. I thought that was gonna be it for Cameron with that many blows to the head. You gotta admire the heart of this young man. So I think he's just running on adrenaline right now. Oh, Vanderpool look. himself cannot believe Alexander Knight's got, got a, a chain or something there, choking out. He doesn't have a chain. Or Cameron Murphy. I think it's the tag rope. Well, it's not the tag rope, but it's some sort of rope. Well, whatever it was, it was an illegal object. And still, still with that level of cheating, that underhanded tactics, they still can't put away the Murphy boys. The Murphy yeah. boys are showing a lot of heart in their debut here. They're showing exactly why they deserve this title shot tonight. Still, the perfect pair able to fire off those tags frequent enough to keep one another fresh. You're absolutely right. The Murphy boys are showing a tremendous amount of tenacity, but that's gonna be it, too. Oh. Still in this one somehow, but Cameron Murphy desperately needs to make a tag. Once again, Joe, you are right. The Murphy boys showing why none of the rest of the tag teams in this company Oh, look at that! Where'd Come on! I never said that. You know who's undeserving? The perfect pair undeserving of those tag titles after tactics like that. Tactics like that. Tactics like that get them the win! They're tarnishing the title with not crap tar. like that, Lyle. No, they're not. You oh. do what it takes to win. I think Cameron... Uh, Cameron Murphy knocked right back down. He's got to make that tag to his brother Carson. Well, he's in enemy territory. Alexander Knight oozing with confidence, taking time to talk smack. Oh, it could be oh, the tag. Almost made it. Oh. <laughs> Vanderpool knocked right off that apron. So close. But so far. These fans here, man, brilliant work. Come on, just like that, perfect pair back in the driver's seat. I can't say I like it. Oh, come on, both of you have to admit, 
That was wonderful timing and great teamwork. You may not like it, but it was effective. Oh, look, now he's got that chain again. Look at him just taunting. He's got it wrapped around his fist. Now he put it away. He was just... He was just fiddling around while the referee was getting some... There's no vacation. the ribs goes for the cover one two alexander knight with a save we were a heartbeat away from new champions and this one is still not over i tell you what the murphy boys are impressing me tonight what's he doing alexander knight's down one. save this time. Tag's getting, or er, pin's getting broken up left and right. Oh, right into the ropes. Right now, Carson and Knight should be the legal men. Carson's head racked those ropes. Could be knocked out, or at least out on his feet. No, he's still in this one. Once again, Carson with the black tights, Cameron in the orange. Samoan drop, Vanderpool could be down for the count. Alexander Knight with that chain. He's got He's him up. Samoan drop. Dodging the, that shot from the chain. One, two, three. What? We have new tag champions in their debut, the Murphy Boys. The winners of this tag contest team champions. I've started a wrestling brand, a brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. 
from counting the lights in your local armory to main eventing in Korokan Hall in Tokyo, Japan. Collar and elbow. The wrestling brand. Hey fans, General Manager Drake Jackson here with the Hysteria Update. At a live event last week, Lucas Tyler finally faced Dakota France. France seemed to have the upper hand in the closing minutes, but Stonewall's music distracted him, allowing Lucas Tyler to take advantage and pick up the win. Another WWA live event is coming up next week, Zero Hour. CCW, Avispo, Josiah, and Alexander Knight will do battle in a fatal four-way to determine who will enter Kentucky's biggest battle royal in the final spot. Also, the Murphy Boys will have a chance at the tag titles once again if they can beat Teddy King and Superior Tony Evans in a number one contenders match. This event will not be uploaded in full anywhere, but check back on YouTube for highlights. The next WWA Hysteria episode will be Friday Night War with Kentucky's biggest battle royal in the main event. This match is an open invitation battle royal for the WWA Championship. That's all for the update, now back to ringside. And his opponent this evening, he hails from the rock and roll capital of the world, Cleveland, Ohio, weighing in at 192 pounds, Tyler! but tonight is his first one-on-one -on -one matchup in the WWA, and he's been trying to get in here, figured this is the best time for him to do that. I've asked this question before, and it begs the question again. Since the two of you aren't a tag team anymore, what has he done to make you hate him so much that you would book him against Roughhouse Rickard? I'll tell you what started this, uh, this, this whole thing here, Roughhouse has been talking about how he's he's old school. He can show any of the young guns up when it comes to that in-ring action. And Tyler Hawkins posted a status on Facebook saying, hey pal, I'm glad you could get your jitterbug cell phone to work long enough to post a status. Call me out. <laughs> and so I figured, hey, these two need to settle their differences in the ring. Well, it is a clash of styles. Bit of a generational difference. Roughhouse Ricker definitely old school. He is, and that might give him the upper hand against Tyler Hawkins. Tyler's never really faced anyone like this. Hawkins with a breakout year in 2017, going for the cover now. Two count. Roughhouse Ricker, more experienced. He's a ring veteran. Tyler Hawkins, former national champion, former WWA tag team champion. Well, ne never uh, discount that experience factor when it comes to a matchup like this. He might might not have the speed. He might not have some of the newer techniques, but he's seen it all, done it all. Roughhouse is definitely biding his time. Well, see, right now he's playing head games. This is something that that we don't see Tyler Hawkins try on on his opponents. That's just not his style. Roughhouse Rickard, he'll take this and make it a slower match, making his pace slow it down and try and keep it on the mat. That's the old school style. Right you are about that. Tyler Hawkins wants to get this going. Lock up, that's not gonna play well for Tyler Hawkins. Yeah, Rough, Roughhouse might have him overpowered. We'd like to take this moment to remind you that if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Oh, it could be over here. Oh, he grabbed him by the hair. That's a dirty move, but it's effective nonetheless. 
He definitely pulled the hair. Our official was not able to see it from his vantage point. He was slick, but he sure enough did it. I saw it. We all know. He didn't see it because the only thing older than Ruffhouse's record is the official. The, the senior official, I guess. You know, Tyler Hawkins should just pull Ruffhouse's hair. Get him back. I was choking him in the corner. So he's going to try and wear him down. He's trying to keep the pace slow. That's going to play to Rickard's advantage. They call him Roughhouse for a reason. He's a bit more smash mouth than Tyler Hawkins is. Already showing off that he's not above using those underhanded tactics. Roughhouse Rickard is the guy at the bar that sits there and nobody messes with. Oh, Tyler Hawkins is going up top. What's he going to do here? Cross body. Two, three. Oh, him with a cross body. Tyler Hawkins the way. Tour winner, Tyler Hawkins. Wow. Well, Wait a minute, referee. I know you're pretty old. And uh, said. all professional wrestling goes by the NWA rulebook, right? Am I right or wrong? Well, in 1982, the rule book stated that if an opponent come off the top rope on another opponent, that opponent wins by disqualification, so you better raise my freaking hand, because I just won. He's raise got, my hand! He's got a five count raise to get my off the top rope. Raise my hand. Now I'm undefeated in singles competition in WWE. Well, I, I don't know if that's going to be officially recognized there, but we'll see how this one plays out. Still to come, six-man tag team match and CCW taking on Josiah. This is WWA Hysteria. Remember to check out the WWA online. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at WWA is now, as well as Facebook.com slash WWA is now. Also, remember to check out the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash WWA is now. Finally, I come back home. The varsity athletes, big homecoming to Owensboro, Kentucky this Friday night. And you know, other than the homecoming court, the next best thing at the homecoming is the prize. Kentucky's biggest battle royal, the varsity athlete, is leaving victorious once again with the WWA title. This is a rematch from the return. This is also a non-title attraction. Introducing first, making his way to the ring. He weighs in at 192 pounds, Lucas Tyler! Welcome back. Got a little bit of a rematch here between Lucas Tyler and Jordan Whitaker from the last hysteria. This is a non-title match. One would think if Lucas Tyler could pick up the win here, he'd be in line for a serious title match. I mean, generally speaking, if you can defeat the champion even in a non-title matchup, that moves you to the front of the line as number one contender, whether it's officially recognized or not. event this past week we saw Lucas Tyler beat Dakota France one-on-one -on -one after a distraction from Stonewall's music. He's got to be riding pretty high with that right now. This evening, he weighs in at 220 pounds. He is your current rating. Or 
uh, pursue a singles title, but here lately it just seems like he'll he'll come out and interfere in your match just to crap on whatever you're doing. He's attacked anyone and everyone, but most frequently Dakota France. Now he's looking to get back in that title hood. He feels that in Evansville, he wouldn't have even lost that match if it wasn't for the referee. You're absolutely right. There doesn't seem to be a lot of rhyme or reason, except that that is his rhyme and reason. He's keeping everybody on guard, on notice, that you can't expect what Lucas Tyler might do next. Well, he's certainly always been that way with his technical proficiency in the ring because he always comes armed with the new maneuver every time we see him in action. And I suspect tonight won't be any different, but look at this. Going Jordan. for the cheap shot, and he failed. Jordan knew he was hit with a cheap shot the last time they faced off before he even got in the ring. He was he had Lucas Tyler well scouted there. Did you see that swift maneuver tossing the belt to JT the referee? That was really nice as well. Jordan's feeling it. Already got Lucas Tyler into the corner. Just manhandling him. Oh. One, just a one count, quick kick out from Lucas Tyler. Uh, a half count. Wow. You know, this might not be a title match, but Lucas Tyler is going to treat it as if it were because it could lead to one. If he can come out victorious, he knows that. He'd be foolish not to treat it as a title match. Because anytime you're in that ring, let alone anytime you're in the ring with the WWE Champion, is a chance to get your name out there and try to be the next in line for a title shot. Jordan Wicker, of course, taking on all comers. Lucas Tyler finding an opening. Well, sometimes when you can't get an opening, you make one. Lucas is taking his time here. I don't know if that's smart. When you're in the driver's seat, when you're facing Jordan Whitaker, you've got to get things done. Oh, wow. Right to the outside, catching that upper body of Jordan's across that rope, hanging him out to dry. Look at this. Oh, man. Wow. That's the type of innovation that we were referring to. Well, it's going to take more than a lateral press without hooking a leg or something else to put away Jordan Whitaker this early. One thing that Lucas Tyler has always suffered from is a little bit of overconfidence, but he's always been able to back it up. He's got to get off those ropes by the five count. You can hear Jordan Whitaker coughing from up here. He's been hung out to dry on those ropes several times already. He's trying to get air. Oh, we're gonna change on. I said overconfidence isn't the right word. Cockiness is the word. Two count. Lucas Tyler obviously mad that this match isn't already over, but you cannot put away Jordan Whitaker that easily. You would think he'd know that by now. Well, you know, I was surprised to see him go for a pinfall so close to the ropes. That's not something that we see Lucas Tyler normally make a mistake like that. I think it speaks to his desperation to wrap this thing up early. Oh, he's tossing him to the outside. No. I think Lucas Tyler thought that he had tossed him to the outside, but it was cat-like reflexes from Jordan Whitaker putting himself on the apron. Kick out. Whitaker gets some missile clothesline. Yeah, taking him out. Got some hang time on that one. Springboard moonsault off the ropes. Thought he had lost his footing there, but Lucas Tyler countering that move. 
right now he's just trying to drive the air out of him. Look at this. Just trying to trying to take his time. He needs to get him to the oh! He needs to get him to the center of the ring and try to pin him. I think he's working on that throat, that neck and head area of Jordan Whitaker. You know, we don't we don't think of uh, Lucas Tyler as a submission artist, but we could very well see him try and set up for some sort of sleeper or similar maneuver. It's not looking good for Jordan Whitaker Look here. At this. Oh. Yeah, going for that neck with a DDT off the ropes. Suspended him in midair. We mentioned Lucas Tyler treating this like it is a WWE Championship match, but Jordan Whitaker will also treat this like it's a WWE Championship match. This man never just phones it in. He's always every match is like a title defense. I know it's annoying. Jordan Whitaker's trying to will the crowd behind him. Jordan Whitaker just always treats everything like like the world is on the line. I don't think Lucas Tyler expected for Jordan to be up that quick. You can see the fear in his face. Look at that, he caught him, crossbody midair, all the way slam. That strength from Jordan Whitaker always just comes out of nowhere. Kips back up and now he's going to the high rent district. From downtown, missile drop kick connects. This one might be over. Jordan's looking, he might be looking for the spear here. He's lined up for it. He's got to be looking for it. Oh! oh. Roll Quick up. thinking by Lucas Tyler. Rolled him up for a two count. Lucas Tyler showing his craftiness, goes for the scissor kick. Spinning F5, he couldn't put him away. Oh, that was close. Two count. Still not enough, there is such resilience on Lucas Tyler's part. That man can absorb a lot of punishment and he's proven it tonight. You gotta think here too, Lucas Tyler definitely wants to win this match because of how embarrassed he was losing that title match in Evansville. And he could be doing it right here. Now that scissor kick, he looks surprised. Now he's going for the cover. One, two. Jordan got his foot on the rope. Lucas Tyler can't believe it. He's put away so many opponents with that scissor kick, but that resiliency of Jordan Whitaker to know where he is, that ring awareness at all times. Oh, we could be seeing a similar situation here. Well, he's wasting a valuable time arguing with the official instead of trying to slap any kind of maneuver, any kind of submission hold on Jordan Whitaker. That could be his downfall. Spear! There it is, that one connects. Wait a second, Lucas Tyler's out of there. Wow. Using what little strength he had left after that one to get out of harm's way now to the outside. He's out on the outside, too. The official administering the 10 count. We can still see a count out here. He could be out for the entire 10 count out here. He took a spear and then fell to the outside. <laughs> he's back up. Oh, no. Look at this. He's just going to walk away? I mean, I guess, I guess it's a non-title match. He doesn't really... Referee still administering the 10 count. Jordan Whitaker very confused. Now this definitely isn't the way Jordan Whitaker wants to win. I mean, to some people, a win is a win, but this is not the way that Jordan Whitaker would like to win a match. To an eight count. Lucas Tyler's back. Oh, come on. Well, that's pretty unsportsmanlike. And 
And he's gone. Jordan Whitaker wins. And the winner of the match, your WWE champion as a result of a count out, Jordan Whitaker. Lucas Tyler remains just as unpredictable as ever. Well, I think he just proved why this was not worth having it as a, as a title match. Because he's certainly not uh, you can cut that acting like a right champion. Now. Lucas Tyler. How dare you deprive these Madisonville fans the pleasure of seeing me whoop your ass in this ring. Because in case you guys don't know who I am, I am a bad man named Jordan Whitaker. I am your WWE champion. And I'll be damned if I take a count out victory to Lucas Tyler. Nah. But what to do, what to do, what to do about this? Because this ain't right to you guys. But I happen to know a guy up there on commentary named Drake Jackson. How about this, Drake? Do Madisonville a favor. Make it to where Lucas Tyler has nowhere to run. Because next time we're here in Madisonville, next time we're here in Madisonville, All right, how about this? Next time we're in Madisonville, on April 20, or April 21st, Lucas Tyler versus Jordan Whittaker in a lumberjack match. What do you say? All I need is a thumbs up, Drake. All I need now. Those are fingers, not thumbs, but okay, I guess that's the same thing. Hysteria Through the Curtain, Volume 1. Ten of your favorite WWA entrance themes, including the WWA Hysteria theme. Tyler Hawkins. Andrew Hunter. The system. And many more. Now available on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, and more. Just search for the World Wrestling Alliance. from Logan Abel tonight. Well, Jones isn't going to need any help in beating the disgrace to Vispo. Well, Jones was chased away, seemed to be threatened earlier in the night by a Vispo. Yeah, he looked like he was legitimately afraid of a Vispo. He had such a weird look on his face. He, he's, he was just toying with a Vispo. I've known a Vispo a long time, and I'm, I'm telling you now, something is not right. Something is not okay with him. I'm worried about him. He seemed to have snapped since he lost that mask. And, I mean, we see him, we've seen him jump off the X in the Ultimate X match. We've seen him working and around balconies. I'm coming into ringside by Logan Abel, weighing in at 120 pounds of this boat. Logan Abel has been there with him every step of the way, though. These two still have 
such a bond. One day it might lead them back to the WWA Tag Team Championships. People in the front row will be able to find barf bags under their seat. Now that Abispo has been unmasked, so feel free to use those as needed. Would you stop it? He's a good looking dude. I've been wondering why he wore a mask this whole time. Well, he doesn't do anything for me, but you know, whatever. Look at, look at his mannerisms. He's, he's certainly changed since the mask has come off. He, he's a sick man. I don't know if I'd go that far, but... Jones already got into the outside. Trying to stay away from the Vispo in this one. Andrew Hunter trying to coach along Jones. Andrew Hunter would be a... A great coach in anyone's corner. A master tactician. This whole, this whole group of the collective getting together. Andrew Hunter, Jones, the ringleader, and Jeremy, formerly known as Crutch, seemed to be such a strong unit, but back at Ultimate X, we saw Jeremy, again, formerly known as Crutch, interfere and kind of get away from the collective, and we haven't really seen him since then as well, the collective owned his contract. Oh, what a, what a cheap shot by a Vispo. He's unhinged. Well, that was an unusual display of sportsmanship from Jones. I, there's your hero, a Vispo, being a jerk. He's wrestling like a completely different person. Yeah, those changes, not just to his personality, but his in-ring style has started to morph a bit, too. One, one count. Changed or not, Jones doesn't care. He's there to put him down and get out of here. Well, size and strength is its own advantage, regardless of what your opponent's coming at you with. If you tower feet over them, uh, sometimes it... Still going to come up a little short, if you'll forgive the pun. Oh, dropped right on his face. One, two. Joe bringing out the midget jokes early. And I'm in favor of it. I just, I'm not even going to dignify that with a response as the action continues in the ring. Size difference or not, Jones should not be using the ropes to choke out of Vispo like that. That's the thing that frustrates me about someone like Jones is that he, he's got the physique, he's got the skills to do everything by the book, but he chooses not to. I just cannot understand people like that. I'm right there with you, Joe. They're called winners. Yeah, how'd that work out for Andrew Hunter earlier? Well... Andrew Hunter would have won had it not been Vispo getting involved. Nice move by Vispo, quickly going for the cover. Nearly a three count. Also in that move from Vispo, did you see that agility from Jones able to hop up on the second rope? So deceivingly agile. Oh, wow. But still able to plant you like that. There it is, one, two, and three. Not quite. Two counts so far. You know, Vispo's used to being the underdog. It is very rarely, if ever, we can say that he's had a size advantage over anybody he's faced here in the WWA. It's certainly not something that intimidates him. He has the tenacity and the speed to get the job done, regardless of size difference. Now Jones is just trying to drain the life out of Avispo. Oh! Only a one count off of that reverse DDT. 
And still, Jones just raining right. down with the punishment. Is, is Abyssal laughing? Look at that. He's asking for more. What has gotten into this man? That is the strangest thing I've ever seen. Oh, and he's just using his own body as a weapon, throwing himself at Jones. It's like he doesn't care. Wow, pulled him into that DDT. Innovative. It could be, wait a sec, Andrew Hunter's up on the apron. Logan Abel with the save. Save? There was no save? Oh. There was nothing to save. Abispo using that opening to get some offense in on Jones. And Abispo takes a dive. Still just throwing caution to the wind. Abispo what? seems more now than ever willing to sacrifice his own bones to break someone else's. Took him down right off the apron. Donia, Avispo needs help. Ever since he lost his mask, he's become deranged. I think it took him a little bit too long to get Jones back in the ring off of that cannonball. Jones has now got enough momentum to be able to kick out. Oh, come on. I guess now that Avispo's maskless, it's maskless, it is way easier to target those eyes. Even though you shouldn't be doing it. Merge around. Denied by Avispo. He was ready for it. And have we ever seen a counter to the murder go round? Look at that face first, driving him into the canvas. One, two, three. We have never seen that move from Avispo before. Avispo! And look at what it did to Jones. And we have never seen Jones quite manhandled like that. From Avispo, no less. What an incredible win. Stay with us. Coming up next, the six-man tag team match. Stonewall, Teddy King, Superior, Tony taking on superstar Ray Waddell, Jeremy Gray, and Dakota France next on Hysteria. Friday, March 23rd, Owensboro, Kentucky. At the Salvation Army, Kentucky's biggest battle royal. And me, the Kentucky Colonel, the real deal Derek Neal is throwing his name in the hat into the battle royal to be the WWA Champion. Not only will I do that, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one better. I'm even gonna issue an open challenge for one of the most prestigious championships in the state of Kentucky, the Kentucky Classic Championship. And I will make history on that very night as I walk out, still the Kentucky Classic Champion and your new WWA champion. By hook or by crook. All right, this match is set for one ball. It is a six fan tag team attraction making his way into the ring at this time. He brought reigning WWA national champion. Tony Evans. What kind of crap is that? You gotta do the hand thing. I, I don't think he, he has time for it. And he has time to say superior. There's such a... He's probably worried about the threat in this tag match. Now making his way to the ring. Stonewall! Yeah, this is a... Perhaps one of the most formidable three-man 
tag teams that we've ever seen. They Three men with separate interests that all seem to have aligned. And their tag team partner, Teddy King! The biggest jerk of the WWE, Teddy King, who has turned his back on everyone. I don't know what's gotten into him because he used to be so beloved by these fans. You gotta wonder. Look at these three men. A man who undoubtedly stole that Letterman jacket from somebody. Very, very big that Tony Evans and Stonewall have aligned themselves with Teddy King. Teddy King being on top of the WWE for so long, and now these two obviously on a path to the top as well, using Teddy King to help him. As much as I don't like this alliance, they get the job done, and they are threatening. No doubt about it. Look at the arrogance of Teddy King. As arrogant as they are, they all have their work cut out for them tonight because the three men they are facing have a history of working together and fighting each other. They, they know each other in and out. and Jeremy Gray fresh off losing those tag team titles. You got to think that's going to be a factor in how angry they are. Yeah, I'm not, oh. not used to seeing them without those belts around their waist. Those shooters rub it in. At least it's in the rightful place of the perfect pair. Look at this. Just like old times. And their tag team partner representing the system, Superstar Ray Waddell. Superstar Ray Waddell still got a bone to pick with Teddy King. We saw Superstar Ray Waddell and Teddy King fight all over the Evansville Coliseum on the last hysteria, even tossing Teddy King over that balcony onto the entire roster below. What a what tremendous a match that was. Oh man, it was nuts. Action spilling everywhere throughout the arena, including next to our announce booth. I thought our table was gone for sure. <laughs> but let's not forget, Teddy King won that match. And a lot of people argue that it's because of interference from Superior Tony Evans and Stonewall, and I have to agree with him, but still in the record books, he won that match. That's got to be eaten away at Superstar Ray Waddell right now. I do not want to be standing across the ring from him. Look at that, the first two members of the system some would say the most notorious members of the system, Dakota France, superstar Ray Waddell, former tag team champions themselves in the WWE as well as other places. And they got Jeremy Gray, another former member of the system in tow. here obviously kind of getting under the skin of Teddy King. I've seen multiple signs tonight that say Teddy Queen. And the band is back together, boys. Well, that's something I never thought I'd see again, but it's another one of those situations where their current interests kind of lined up and they found themselves 
kind of a team again. That's right, we saw, we saw them, uh, you know, kind of have some bad times within the past year, especially toward the end of 2017, but this new three-man act of Tony Evans, Teddy King, and Stonewall saying that they are the new faces of the WWA brought out the Super Package show, and hey, man, not everything's changing around here. Well, they kind of see themselves as the new blood and want to take out the old guard. All the faces that the fans have come to love over the past many years in the WWA. Uh, I was like, Teddy King might be leaving. And Tony Evans, and now Stonewall in tow. Well, that was a short match. Huh, are we gonna see two matches in count countout? Oh. Joe, what's next? Well, I, I don't think those men standing in the ring are gonna leave without a fight. So that'd be what I'd put my money on. Well, they're standing in the ring. Match can't start till you get in the ring. Has it not started yet? I guess that's why the referees are counting. here behind each individual member. Yeah, making okay. it a point to cheer for each one. We got the super package and the superstar all on the same side. One, two, three. Oh, come on. Oh, well, they were going to give us a system rules for all time's sake, but uh, sorted. So, so it's cool when Teddy and Tony and Stonewall all stall, but the second that Ray Waddell and the Super Package try to do something, that's when you want to start the match? Well, it's, it's called tactics. It's smart maneuvering. Oh! Well, they, they sent Tony Evans and Teddy King to the outside. Look out below! Stonewall landed on his feet. Wow! You cannot knock this man down. And it took... Two men with a clothesline and a low bridge from a third. Uh-oh. All three men with a suicide dive through the ropes. What teamwork. Even if it's just for one night, the system is back, baby. Nice move from Dakota. To face a Teddy King. Oh, and wow. a cutter out of nowhere, and here comes the superstar, Centon. Look at this teamwork. It's like they've never even taken a break. They haven't missed a step. Tony Evans gets dumped right on his head. Well, and speaking of this teamwork, that, that could make all the difference in this match because these three we formerly knew as the system working very well in tandem while their opponents are just three people who happen to have similar interests and enemies. They've still got to deal with Stonewall though. Oh yeah. Looks he should like count as two really, right? I mean, come on. Look at this man. Can you even call him a man at this point? Look at He's just such a wow. Such a mess. Raw power. Say I'm surprised. Easily winning. Nice vertical suplex. He's putting Jeremy Gray right on his back. Could be over for the system if things keep going the way they're going. And there's our first actual tag in this match. So I guess your legal men starting out were. Stonewall and Jeremy Gray, and now Jeremy Gray and Teddy King. Well, this is not a good place for Jeremy Gray to be. Madisonville? No, in the corner. 
sandwich between Stonewall and the national champion, Superior Tony Evans. Well. Oh, and that chop just reverberated throughout this building. You hear the roar of these fans. It may not be a good place for Jeremy Gray to be, but it's a great place for the WWA to be. And you can be here every week just by clicking on YouTube, like, sharing, and subscribing with all your friends. And then you can catch more of me, Lyle Valentine, every time a new episode is posted up. Isn't that right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure people are clicking on our episodes of Hysteria just to listen to the smooth stylings of Lyle Valentine's commentary. Go ahead and comment below to let Drake Jackson know that that is, in fact, the case. We'll shut him up. Look at that. Referee's guy's back turn. I thought Jeremy Gray was dead. Teddy, Tony, and Stonewall acting as a pack of wolves. Well, you're against it now, but earlier, when the, the makeshift reuniting of, of the system was doing it, it was three on one, you're all for it. Well, it was also three on one earlier, but that one was Stonewall. Jeremy Gray struggling to get back to his feet. Oh, and just like that, trying to drive the wind out of the stomach of Jeremy Gray. You know, for being one of the younger members of the WWA roster, Tony Evans has a lot going for him. But I guess that doesn't really matter when you're dropped on your back like that. I tell you, I know how to stop this movement by Teddy King. Shove straight up his mouth hole. Well, for once, I agree with you. You don't even know how to do it. I haven't told you yet. You see, how did how did Stonewall become a part of this? Well, Teddy King paid him. Right. You read on his back, it says Stonewall, mercenary, which means he goes to the highest bidder. System's got money. Oh! The system should pay Stonewall more, and boom, that's an end to the reign of Teddy King. Well, all it takes is being outbid one time, and that strategy's moot. You need somebody you can trust to have your back, not just somebody you can pay to have your back till the next highest bidder comes along. The oh! Teddy King had Dakota France scouted. Quick thinking. Still not enough to put Dakota away. Teddy King seems even faster than usual tonight. He's determined. This is his chance to shut up all three members across the ring from him and his two friends. This is his chance to shut up the critics. Just insult to injury. Teddy King is as disrespectful as they come. If he really wanted to shut the critics up, he would not be as disrespectful. Look at that! Oh! It came back to bite him. Teddy King's back up. See, that's a problem. You got to get out of that corner if you can, but these three men are not going to let that happen. Well, Dakota Francis in trouble. Oh, my God. Oh, hand caked him. Oh, my. That. Is it the speed of Stonewall? Oh. 
Stonewall has taken an interest in Dakota France specifically ever since they had that one-on-one -on -one match where Dakota called him out and seemed to have the giant beat until Lucas Tyler interfered. This past week at a live event, we saw Lucas Tyler pin Dakota France after a distraction from Stonewall's music, so you know they're still into it. Nice clothesline from the national champion. I'm surprised Stonewall would even want to get out right now. Tony Evans has brought a whole new level of prestige to that national championship. Not in quality of defenses because he's been very underhanded in a lot of it, but he's one of our longer reigning national champions I can remember. Well, and to be fair, Tony Evans, while he's not above bending the rules, he doesn't do it as often as his teammates in there tonight. Dakota France didn't want to get caught with that backstabber again by Teddy King. Held on to the ropes this time. Smart thinking from Dakota France. Oh, and Teddy King moves out of the way just in the nick of time. Dakota France looks like he is hurt. He's got to make a tag, but Teddy King back to his feet, and he's going to stop it. He's not going to let that happen. And now just dragging, dragging Dakota France back to that corner. Oh, now Stonewall tagged in. One, two. I'm telling you, his focus is to destroy Dakota France tonight. Yeah, I, for one, was pretty shocked when Dakota France challenged Stonewall. Why would somebody want to face that man voluntarily? But Dakota France is brave enough. It's a very David and Goliath mentality, and Dakota France has years of experience in that ring over Stonewall, so... I guess I can kind of see why he thought he could get it done. Well, he's going to have to do something or he's going to pass out from this sleeper hole. Dakota France is barely hanging on. His lips are turning blue. He's trying to get out of it. Ray Waddell's trying to will Dakota France back to his feet, and it seems like it might be working. A second win from Dakota France here. Tag is made. Transfer to Teddy King, and... Wow. They're just handing him back and forth. Oh, look at this. Oh, just showing off with some squats now. And, what and are they another doing? Tag. Are they... They're just having fun with it. Yeah, it looks like they're just toying with Dakota France. He's so out of it right now. Not out of it enough, though. Still able to kick out after taking that much offense. And, uh, Dakota France unbelievably kicking out there. Dakota France again deep in enemy territory and far outnumbered. What in the world are we going to see here? Look at this teamwork. It's a double monkey flip. These two have been spending all of their time outside the ring together. Oh. Training. Working Crushing in the gym. blow. Lateral press, but only a two count. Stonewall's getting even more angry right now, and you're not going to like him when he's angry. I don't think I'd like him on a relatively calm day. Oh, that could be the opening Dakota France needs. He needs to get out of that corner. There goes Tony Evans to the outside. Dakota France. 
it's almost there. Can he make the tag? No, Stonewall denies Dakota the tag. And back to that crushing headlock. Stonewall is on top of it. Crowd now getting behind Dakota. Stonewall just toying, toying with Dakota France. There's the tag, the national champion in. Also denying Dakota France the tag. Dakota France has taken a beating at this point. Oh, look at this. Now they're just picking apart Dakota France's leg. That could come into play later because he's well known for that super kick. Well, and also using the sharpshooter, he won't be able to get the leverage if he can't use his own legs. Taking apart that base. Both men are down. They both desperately need to get the tag here. Yeah, but Dakota France is taking such a beating. Referee JT trying to administer the 10 count here. If neither of these men can make it back to their feet or do a tag by the 10 count, this could be a no contest. Teddy King trying to decide whether to stop France or tag in. He chooses the former. Probably a wise move, but... Oh, did you hear that? Right across the side. Jeremy Gray has Teddy King. He's lined up for that package pile driver. Teddy King going up top. Oh, wow. Square kick to the side of the head. Nice. Tony Evans rolls the dice. Wait a sec. Oh! Knee to the face of Tony Evans. Oh, driver! That could be it right there. That is a move so devastating they outlawed it for years. That agility from Stonewall always surprises me. Jeez. Talk about devastating. Anybody get the number of that Mack truck? Oh. Stonewall's going up top. Super kicks in stereo. And a rolling elbow across the back of the cranium. All three men. Trying wow. the pin, but Stonewall still kicks out. Of all three men. That would have put down any other man for more than a three count. Oh, another super kick. Two super kicks. Another rolling elbow, and he's still on his feet, you guys. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Power slam. And Teddy King's just beating up Dakota France on the outside.
outside. Now superior Tony Evans going after Jeremy Gray. Meanwhile, Looking stone ball room. up top. Big splash off the top. This one is over. One, two, three. Wow. to celebrate this victory. And honestly, if you ask me, he was the MVP for this team. If anybody should be soaking in the glory of this win, it should be Stonewall. And he just walked right out of here and left these two goons to celebrate. Stay with us. Coming up next, CCW taking on Josiah Full Metal Madness on WWA Hysteria. This Friday, WWA presents The War, one of the biggest shows of the year. But let me tell you, I, of course you all know, I'm no stranger to The War. I am a two-time winner of Kentucky's biggest battle royal. But it's not just The War that I have to think about. It's Superior Tony Evans. Let me tell you something, kid. You're good. You're smart. You have it all. At least you think you do. But until you step in the ring with me, you might be superior. But one thing you will not be this Friday is a winner. Because I'm going to win the national championship. I'm going to be the sole survivor. I am going to be Dakota France all night long. Woo! WWA Hysteria as we are gearing up for our main event, Full Metal Madness. The stagehands are setting the scene. One wall of steel cage covered in weapons for these two men to use, and it's personal. Of course, Josiah bringing the queen out with him. The mastermind of all his dastardly plans. Josiah trying to wade through the people at ringside. You may have He's noticed ready that, to get this started. You may have noticed that contraption there at ringside. It's a cornucopia of weapons that are perfectly legal to use. This is going to get nasty. Well, we are, already had a little sneak preview of it earlier in the evening to start the show. Took the entire locker room to pull these two apart, and now we're going to turn them loose with weapons. That's right. And let's take you back to Ultimate X to why this match is even happening. We saw Josiah for weeks talking about wanting to end him and the fact that he was the source of all of his suffering. We didn't know who he was talking about until he stormed the ring after the Ultimate X match. Strung up CCW and stapled a piece of paper to his forehead that said false profit. He's definitely got a bone to pick. And then at a live event this week, Josiah would only agree to meet with CCW if CCW was locked in a cage, but CCW busted his way out of there and hit the queen with a steel chair.
John Josiah. And who can blame it? What has he got? What is he doing? Oh, wow. Got his own confetti cannon. Well, now that CCW shot his load of confetti all over the fans, we've got a bigger mess than ever. And this match is going to get messy. Josiah spills to the outside, CCW in pursuit. CCW introducing Josiah to that ring post and he's grabbed something, some kind of baking tray from underneath the ring. Oh! No telling what kind of goodies have been stashed under there. That is the last time I leave my cookware under the ring. Uh, it sounded like Josiah's skull just cracked open. Well, we appreciated the cookies nonetheless. And now... They were pretty good. You're a pretty good baker, seriously. Thank you. Yeah. CCW is just destroying Josiah on the outside. That one cage wall coming into play. Yeah, this match, a first of its kind here in the WWA. We've got a wall of weapons adorning one side of the ring. I had to sign the contract for this match. CCW brought a contract to me and said Full Metal Mayhem. I said, what does that even mean? And he said, don't worry about it, just sign it. Now, I don't know if I'm going to regret signing this match or not. Probably also explains the waivers the legal team had you draw up as well. Josiah breaking free. Able to just rain down with strikes on CCW. Much like the two cookies I had of Drake Jackson's earlier, this match is chock full of nuts. Because these guys are crazy. Scoop slam, and now we see the first move in ring. This match somewhat back to basics, I guess, after that elbow. It's going to take more than that elbow. This is going to be a fight. He's got him lined up for some with an abdominal stretch here. Don't think that worked out in his favor. Josiah's trying to plant him down. Oh, and the first weapon from the wall has been drawn. Josiah. Going for that chair. Trying to undo that chair. Double ax handle, CCW. Denies Josiah the opportunity and now he's going for a bat. Took a little too much time. Oh, no. Oh. Could have bruised some internal oh. organs. Wow. As the first hit didn't, the second one will. Swing and now Josiah has a bat. That was probably the dumbest thing I've seen CCW do. Well, he had his back turned to Josiah for even just a couple of seconds, and that's something you cannot do when you're in there with Josiah. Well, the, the damage already starting to show across the back of Josiah. Perhaps he thought the job was done, or at least pretty close to it. 
Josiah threatening the referee and then choking out CCW here, but there's no rules in this match. The referee is powerless to do anything except for call for the bell at the three count. He's now trying to get that, get that trash can lid down. What kind of destruction is in store? CCW able to recover. Josiah with no choice but to turn his focus to CCW, dumps him out of the ring and goes back to this weapon wall. CCW is down on the outside. Josiah now opting for that chain. Oh There's no. Big Joe, oh, you know. This is bad. We've seen this before. He's trying to choke him out again. He's gonna hang him. Wait a second, he's chaining. He's chaining that wrist to the rope. Holy cow. A little different than what we saw last time. Yeah, you're right. Still just debilitating CCW and hanging him from that second rope. And now he's open for punishment. Well, this is bad news for CCW. Josiah is a man crazed. Oh, like there's not enough weapons on the wall. He's now looking under the ring. CCW able to get his hands free. Hard right hand, and now just running that wrist tape along CCW's face. You done made him mad. Oh, he's got that chain. Let's see what he does. Oh, man. Right across the face. There's going to be chain prints across the forehead of Josiah. Oh. Normally, I would say this is the type of match that favors Josiah tremendously. But with CCW on the other side, I don't know if that's the case. These two have gone to wars like no two competitors have ever done in the WWE. CCW looks like he's about to take out the trash. Oh! What a blow! Look at how mangled that trash can is, and look at how mangled Josiah is laying. That's on the mat. Metal trash can completely collapsed across the skull Total of carnage. Josiah. CCW now has a chair. First chair to come into play. Oh! Right across that shoulder. What's CCW thinking now? He's taking a moment to think of some sort of other evil plan. Uh-oh. Targeting the head. Now Josiah in possession of the chair. Able to cut that off before more punishment was dealt, but you can see Josiah stumbling around. Chair shots are, they seem to be ineffective against this, this adrenaline filled CCW. Oh, that one seems to have done the trick. He's still not completely down. What's it gonna take? Oh, Josiah will give it to him, whatever it takes. CCW was a man determined, but. Josiah will go to great lengths, and I'm really surprised that didn't end the match right there. CCW is a man determined to get a brain injury. Josiah slipped to the outside trying to get some breathing room. He's not trying to get some breathing room. Oh, well, he's, he's got, got that weapon. staple gun. Oh, no. We've seen this before in Ultimate X. Josiah's signature weapon as of late. He tried to use it on Nick Willis in Evansville. CCW not letting him use it this time. Oh no. 
Power bomb. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, that's one way to reverse a power bomb. Wow. I cannot believe this. CCW. Once again, staples to the forehead. A referee trying to trying to pick those out. He's trying to trying to get him out. Uh, embedded in his skull. Josiah's going to do it again. If Josiah's going to continue having these matches, our referee's going to need to take one of those cobra head staple removers with him. Oh, oh no! CCW's bleeding. We're definitely gonna need some help out here. We got a half crimson mask, and he's gonna bury those staples with a oh. shot to the head. Josiah's not done. Set up that chair on the outside. Oh, on earth. Now he's, he's got a ladder. Josiah setting up some kind of trap on the outside. Some evil contraption. What kind of contraption? Oh, oh my gosh! Oh. Look at the dent in that ladder. Nobody home? Wow! This is insane. Oh my god! That's a, it's a metal ladder that is now contorted the rungs. Are contorted? We got a table now. Oh no. More and more carnage just keeps getting added to this match. And a chair in the ring now. And CCW bringing the ladder into play. I just put it all in there. The only thing is not in the ring is Josiah. This is insanity. No, this is hysteria. Any young viewers watching at home, I'd like to apologize for the carnage that is ensuing in this main event. But these two men have a grudge. CCW's got that ladder set up to any young viewers i would like to say be sure to like and subscribe oh share it with your friends don't let your parents know you're watching right across the top of the head i can't believe what i'm seeing it's gruesome carnage at its finest what is ccw doing he's got He's got this contraption. I don't like the way this looks. Blood pouring down from the forehead of CCW. He's got to be getting lightheaded here. And Josiah rolling out of the ring, trying not to get pinned. Extremely wise move by Josiah. I don't know how much more of this carnage I can I can stand to watch. Yeah, this is certainly not the sort of thing we're accustomed to seeing. CCW's chasing down. 
down the queen and he's he's getting our ring bell table and putting it in the ring oh my gosh we need a probably need some sort of medical personnel to look at CCW that blood just pouring down the face I knew these two had it out for each other, but I did not know to what extent. These two men are willing to put each other and themselves through everything. Oh no. Oh, the steel chair right across the windpipe of Josiah. It's gotta be hard to breathe. What's he doing now? He's gonna setting up for something else. Ladder out of the way. He's lining up the table for something. Could we see another power bomb? No. Uh -oh. oh no. Oh, he's getting him in position. CCW is gonna go up high. This is bad news. We saw earlier tonight, he's not afraid to go off the top rope when he has to. Well, he told the fans at the front row, this is it. CCW high above the ring. Oh, oh. leg drop. Buckled that table under him. He's got to get over there and pin him. Josiah's not moving. One, two. After all of this, Josiah still has the wherewithal to kick out before the three. Jesus. Bit of a miscalculation on CCW's part as the, the steel legs of the table took some of that impact out. And he'd just been just two inches down further. He would have crushed and folded Josiah in half. Well, he might be able to crush him now. He's got that bad. Crush his windpipe, at least. Here he goes. Oh, Josiah's got that bat. Oh, right across the head. One, two. Oh. Wow. What's it going to take to put either of these men down? his boot it could be over beautiful execution on that kick <laughs> Josiah's got he's got a bag got a bag of something oh no oh. tell me that's not what I think it is I think it is. Oh, you no, no, no. The referee, JT, trying to tell him, come on, man. How much is too oh. far? Yeah, that's Thumb not. tacks. Those are thousands of tacks poured into the ring. Oh, no. Josiah telling the front row, your hero ends tonight. It could be if he gets dropped on those things. He's already been stapled and now he's about to be oh, attacked no, as well. No. CCW fighting back. Come on.
took a lot out of both of these men. I don't know if either of these men will be the same. JT. Josiah saying this isn't over. I don't understand how it can't be. The fact that Josiah is able to walk out of here is insane to me. What a main event. Remember to like, share, and subscribe.